Hi, my name is Lee Kennedy. I'm an enterprise architect with Click, and today I'm going to talk to you about our systems development life cycles and how they fit with your ClickSense enterprise SaaS environment. When we talk about a systems development life cycle, or SDLC for short, a key part of this is the movement of applications from development through testing and into production. Many organizations may have more stages than this, such as regression testing, but the key concepts and requirements are the same for all organizations. For customers who are coming from ClickSense Client Managed or another BI tool, this would generally mean one environment per tier. This is both expensive and complex to manage. While a customer could run their SDLC in SaaS with multiple tenants, the way we have designed the ClickCloud platform is so an organization can handle its SDLC within a single tenant. While it is possible for an organization to use multiple tenants in their SDLC, it's not needed and rarely will be what Click would recommend to customers. I'll now go over some of the key concepts and features of ClickSense Enterprise SaaS which make this possible. Firstly, we have spaces. There are three types of spaces in ClickSense Enterprise SaaS. You have a personal space. This is a private area where any user with a professional license can create their own applications, experiment, and it won't impact other users. You can't share apps from your personal space and other users aren't able to collaborate with you. Next, we have a shared space. This is most commonly used to develop apps because it's a collaborative space. Multiple developers can look at the same app and share the app with other users. A team may have a shared space for private development and consumption of their own apps. Finally, we have managed spaces. A managed space is used to provide a governed access to applications with strict access controls on the apps and the data. Apps in a managed space can be reloaded, but they can't be edited other than at users adding their own community sheets and bookmarks and things like that. Next, we have relative paths. Relative paths allow you to access connections and data files relative to where your app resides. Finally, we have publish with replace. What this allows us to do is publish an application to a managed space, which will overwrite the previous version, but preserve any community content, bookmarks and other things. Now I'm going to talk about relative paths, the different ways we can reference connections. We can design the path statement around whether we want the connection to change when we move from one space to another. Say, for example, we create a connection to our called SQL to our database. We might set the connection in dev to point to our development database, in test to our test database, production to our prod databases. By using the relative connection syntax in our load script, our application can always pick the right data connection for that environment. There may also be data that should be always consumed from the same space regardless. In that case, the space name is needed in the connection string. So we look at our examples here. When we want to connect to our personal space, we would just say lib connect to SQL. That, that is going to go into the personal space. If it is not, we have the colon will represent the space name. So if we want to use a different space, we'd say lib, lib connect to development colon SQL. If we want to, however, use the relative connection, we would say lib connect to just colon SQL. So we, we do use the colon to indicate it's coming from a space, but we don't list the space name and it will default to the current space. And we have a similar syntax for data files where we've got the lib colon slash slash prior to that. But the same, if you just use the, the data files, it will go to the personal space. If we give it a space name, it will go to that space. And if we give it a colon, it will be relative to wrap in the current space. So let's have a look at an example here. We have, we've created an environment which has as well as the user's personal space, which we'll use as a sandbox, a development space, a test space, a production space, and a regression space. Both test and production are managed spaces, so people can't change the apps in those environments. So a developer would start developing the app in their personal space. They then move the application to the development shared space, so other developers can collaborate on the application. They then publish the application to the test managed space, and if testing is successful, also to the prod managed space. 
The app will then be ex exported and stored in, in your software configuration management system or wherever else you would keep an archive of your or apps. The developers will then start working on the next version of the app in the development space. A bug is identified in production, so a copy of the app is released and loaded into the regression shared space. The bug fix version is published to test, and once testing is successful, then published to production. We then manually merge the fix into the current development stream. When this is version is ready, we publish to test again. In this case, the test identifies issues, so we fix them, republish the test, then once successful, we republish the production, overriding our previous version of the app. Here is a different model. In this case, we do not have a regression stream, and we address bugs in the development stream. These are just a couple of examples of how you could put together your SCLC model for your organization. And that will very much depend on your organization. There's no right answer from Click. We've built a platform to allow you to adapt your organization into this model. Be sure to look out for my upcoming video where I show you how we can take this even further, where we will have separate spaces for different departments in dev, test and prod. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.